hello and welcome to Ellen Ruth's Soap. And today I am making batch number three in my gemstone soap series using my beautiful rose quartz. Aren't those just so pretty? I, I love them. I've made rose quartz soap before using a rose quartz fragrance. And today I wanted to do something a little different. So the fragrance I chose is Pink Berry Mimosa from Wholesale Supplies Plus. This is fruity and light and just lovely. To me, it smells like those pink stones. Let me read the scent description to you for this fragrance. It says a playful combination of sweet strawberries, ripe raspberries, citrus peel, and sparkling pink Moscato. Doesn't that sound good? So it's got a little effervescent champagne-y type undernotes in there. So I'm so excited to do these. I love these stones. They just are so pretty to me. This is the fragrance, this is the stones. I haven't picked out my colors yet, as I will go back to my inspiration colors back there. I will have them picked out by the time we come back with the oils and we're ready to roll. I'll show you the colors I grabbed. And uh, so with this inspiration, let me <laughs> go ponder the colors back there and we will come back and make some really beautiful quartz inspired soap. All right, we are back and it's time to add the soap additives. But first, let me show you the colors that I picked for today. Um, so I brought the stones back to my mica shelf and I took a look around and the first color I picked is French Silk Stockings from Wholesale Supplies Plus. Isn't that beautiful? It's just like this ballerina type pink blush and I love it. And then to go along with that, I picked Sexy Pink Slippers also from Wholesale Supplies Plus. I thought those two looked really pretty. And then I'm like, you know, I need something more. So I grabbed my Lilac Mica from Be Scented. Uh, and this is also just a very nice, beautiful light purple. So I thought that would just kind of punch up the pink colors. And then, because I want this to really be sparkly and shimmery, I got my Shimmer Gold Mica from Nurture Soap, and this is such a gorgeous gold, glittery, shimmery color. And I mixed it in just a little bit of light carrier oil here. I did not super fat for this or anything, it's just extra. So I mix the mica with the oil and I will drizzle this on top and do like a little swirly. I loved how it came out on another soap I just did. And so I wanted to add some gold shimmer and then we'll put the stones down on top. I just thought this would kind of glam it up a little. So that is the colors. Let's get the additives in here. So what I've decided to do is I have coconut milk here and uh, this is guar gum free, pure coconut milk. It gets very thick in the can, so my advice is to dump the can out into a bigger vessel. I took my stick blender and blended it all smooth because it separates like the coconut water and the cream, and I want it all blended together. So this is well blended, and it's just this gorgeous, thick, creamy, makes a beautiful soap, coconut milk. So let's get the milk in oil method the same way that I do with goat milk. Um, I just water discount from my lye solution to make room for this amount of liquid. Oh my goodness. I love coconut milk soaps. They are so creamy and delightful. All right, let's get the dry ingredients in here. We've got the oats and the kale and clay. We'll get this all blended up and wait for our lye water to cool and we'll be right back. All right, we're back and it's time to add our lye solution that has tussa silk fibers, sodium lactate, and cane sugar, not in that order. <laughs> so that's what's going on in here. All right, let's get this in here. I'm gonna stir up to emulsion and get my colors split off and then we'll blend and I want to do a hanger swirl so these will just be swirly and beautiful. That's what I'm going for today. Wow, look at that, it's kind of turning yellow. That's fun. <laughs> it's a coconut milk, it might be the fragrance is already in here. I had the fragrance in the oils. There we go. Let's get these gorgeous colors. I have them dispersed in just a little bit of distilled water to make blending easier.
next day. It's been about 24 hours, and look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I'm so happy with the colors on top here and the stones, and I had just enough uh, rose quartz stones to do this, <laughs> so I was very happy about that. And um, let's get in here and see how that hanger swirl came out on the inside. lovely Olga and uh, if it looks like my stones won't go through the cutter I had good luck on the first two in the gemstone series but I can always whip out my single bar cutter if I need to and I'm hoping I don't need to I'm loving the colors in this we did have kind of an odd color morph um, when we mixed the lye solution in, it kind of went really wonky, but it bounced right back. So they are just gorgeous today. All right, I think, let's just try it here. I think we're gonna make it. All right, we made it through. Yeah, so with the gemstones, I can always pull out my good old trusty single bar cutter if I needed to, but we made it. Look at those beautiful colors, I'm so happy. This coconut milk was just delightful to work with. And I just wanted to say this did go through gel phase after I got it in the mold. Ooh, that was close. <laughs> after I got it in the mold, um, I put the wooden lid on top of the mold and threw a blanket over it and left it overnight. And so this, this is gel afterwards. And I, again, I'm say, I've said it before, I like to gel my soaps. I am a geller. So. That's in, even with the coconut milk, I do it with my goat milk. So typically when I do a milk soap, I do the milk in oil method, which is a portion of the liquid, but I have done 100% milk soaps and I still gel my soaps. Um, so I know some people when they do 100% milk soaps, they don't like to gel their soaps and that is fine, but I do gel even with full milk soaps. So, and I treat the coconut milk just like I do the goat milk, any fresh milk. Uh, I've even done um, soap with whey. When I used to make cheese, the fluid that's left over after you get the milk solids out, that's the whey and it's really wonderful, nutrient dense, and I think it's great for your skin too. So I've done whey soap and uh, I gelled those also. Let's get to the next loaf and I'll keep talking. All right, here is the center loaf. So I've been asked before if I have any issues with scorching and my milk soaps. And no, I have never had an issue with that. I don't even really know what scorching looks like. I think that it can give off a, um, a unpleasant scent if you scorch your milk, but I have not had that issue. All right, let's see here. Looks like that one is really close. This one and this one are giving me a little bit of a wonder here. Let's just try it. Woo, we made it. All right. So anyway, to keep talking about gel phase and milk soaps, I'm a fan. But you know, it's a personal preference too. I do have a girlfriend that makes exclusively goat milk soap and she does not gel. As soon as she pours it in the mold, she throws it right in the refrigerator and her soaps are absolutely beautiful. So it's a personal preference. So <laughs> just cause I like to gel doesn't mean you have to gel. You find what you like, but I do find the colors are a little bit brighter when I gel um, versus throwing it in the refrigerator. Also, if you have any questions or things that you want me to address in my videos, please leave a comment down below and tell me What's on your mind? If there's something that I haven't thought of yet or that you wish I would talk about, I'd love to hear any suggestions you've got. All right, last loaf. And I think we're gonna get some soapy patterns today. 
I hope so. Usually when I do a hanger swirl, there are soapy patterns to be seen, which I love. All right, we're gonna go for it here. Oh, we made it. Oh, I'm so happy. All three loaves, fantastic. Oh, this is pretty. And this fragrance is very um, nice, it's pleasant, it's a little fruity, a little light. It's very fresh and um, not overpowering, which I really like, because I think rose quartz have a very gentle appearance. They're not like, you know, bold, they're very soft and gentle. And I think this fragrance really mimics that kind of a vibe, if you will. So I'm overall very happy with these. And this was the third and final soap in my gemstone collection. So these are all gonna go on the soap curing rack and they will probably be ready sometime in March. At the time of filming this, it's early February. So I usually like to release my videos after the soap is cured so that if people like it, they can go to the shop and get their hands on a bar. <laughs> That's how I try to schedule it. Doesn't always work out that way, but that is what I attempt to do. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this gemstone series and uh, please hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet and comment down below all the good stuff. I appreciate you being with me today and have a wonderful day.